esteemed uh, head uh, kalavadi madam organizers of uh, today's webinar uh, dr nihar dr anas uh, my dear uh, students i uh, first of all thank all the organizers for giving me such a wonderful opportunity to interact with the students on this uh, webinar series though we have a, one a galaxy of uh, scientists in our institute uh, it was so fortunate that i was selected for this uh, uh, technical session on highlighting the role of uh, uh, cpcri as well as icr uh, in this uh, for the students welfare or in uh, redefining agriculture for that matter whether my slides are uh, visible so uh so i think it is uh, taking some time no problem uh, let it uh, come over that uh, as you all know that you are all agricultural students uh, maybe in the fag end of your agricultural uh, degree program so you'll be just uh, wondering what kind of career or what kind of uh, uh, transformation that the agriculture is uh, generating over uh, the years or in what way it will be of use to the uh, nation in what way your services will be taken to that so to start with uh, i will just uh, say something about the basics of uh, farming uh, techniques the role of uh, the uh, icr system especially the cpcri and the way in which we can touch upon some of the emerging issues and to have a holistic trend to manage this particular Uh, emerging challenges which the agricultural system is presently facing as you all know that agriculture the word is derived from ager which means uh, field and cultura which means the cultivation so that is how it is so a profession with a culture so which means field cultivation scientifically agriculture as you all know is nothing but harnessing solar energy so as a human being we may not be in a position to harness solar energy successfully for the production scenario but every plan for that matter is in a position that is why we have to be extremely thankful to the farm, uh, farming community because it is their hard toil that the entire world is now reaping our entire world is now uh, taking the food successfully so in the words of the uh, saint poet of from tamil nadu thiruvalluvar he told uludundu vaalvare vaalvar they live who live to plow and eat the rest behind them bow and eat so we are all behind the farming community to fill our stomach and for the information the food is always uh, likely to be our medicine in future so this is one of the area i think we have to be extremely uh, focused and where exactly is the uh, need for that so as you all know that food is the output of an agricultural system so what does it bring about it brings a friendship it brings happiness together it holds the family communities together that is why we call this profession as a noble profession so that we always feel that the communities are always closer it cracks idea so whenever uh, honorable prime minister says chai peeche uh, chai peeke charcha we always have to have the proud that food ignites a kind of ideas so it sparks intelligence with you and it triggers a kind of momentum so that you always come uh, to reap the benefit out of that now the right to food is the bill which presently we are talking about and the right to right food is a point which is always there so you people are there on live in this program just because you are not hungry so that is the point we have to underline since you are not hungry you are very much active and trying to listen to what is happening around so always thank the farmer if you ate today so that is the motto of uh, the uh, motto behind what we have to respect and salute the farming community why because food has always a saturation limit whereas our purse and position will always expand which means when your stomach is full you are satiated and you will never look for anything beyond that but when it is not so it is always there so to start with i just wanted to highlight about the earth overshoot date or the ecological dead day what does it definitely indicates so how much you are consuming or how much you are exploiting the nature if you just see the human annual demand 
is not in a position to compensate what uh, natural resource can generate that particular year. So that is really a worrisome. So Andrew Simmons has defined what about this earth overshoot day because we emit a lot of carbon dioxide as our honorable uh, chief guest today mentioning about the greenhouse gas. We emit a lot of these kind of gases in such a way that our oceans, our atmosphere is not able to neutralize this particular scenario. So we have to be extra cautious. We deplete a lot of resources, our forest resources, all the natural resources we deplete only for the man benefit of the mankind. That is exactly what has happened. Now, if you see the Earth Overshoot Day, which started somewhere in November 1st, 2000, in a period of 20 years, we have just brought down our resources tremendously back. Now, you just see in 2019, it was July 29th, which means by July 29th, you exhaust all the resource, natural resources available in the system so that you are overshooting the Earth's limiters, capacity, Earth's bio capacity to produce. So that is exactly a very, very bad thing. Now, what happened to the last year? The COVID, though everybody is now worried about the system, but the ecology is highly benefited by this COVID pandemic. The result in this, in 2020, it has exceeded one month. So one month, we have just reduced the natural. Again, in this year, 29, uh, 2021, we have again brought back to July 20, which means the human beings are not understood the exact complications which we are making in the scenario. So my dear student friends, always see that you host a kind of a vegetarian party. You always have a low consumption of energy in your house. Be a natural resource, a kind of expert. See that the natural resources are not depleted. You telecommunicate. Don't waste paper. That is one of the reasons what, has, what this COVID has made, which has reduced it. So my dear students, have uh, always thinking on this particular line because we always need a kind of design. The design is what these kind of webinar series are. So the design is very important. A very important, not the disaster which we are talking about. So disaster is earth is overshooting, but we have to have a design to bring down this particular resources well over the world. It is not a small issue, as you all know that. Even in the global scenario, agriculture is in the uh, back foot. That is one of the reasons why in 2014, the entire United Nations was proclaiming the year as International Year for Family Farming. So entire family as a whole was uh, just kind of uh, triggered to have a kind of care that they can feed the nation or they can feed the entire uh, world. So that is the scenario. So all farm family or all family for that matter should have a backyard kitchen, backyard uh, nursery or backyard uh, farmyard system so that they produce something and that takes care of it. And next came in 2015, the International Year for Soil because soil, the healthy soil is the backbone of all the resources. If your soil is healthy, the entire nation is going to be healthy because soil is the uh, complete holistic system of entire thing. It produces and gives you life. So that is what in 2015, we celebrated International Year for Soils. Again, in 2016, it was pulses. See, everything is linked to an agricultural scenario. So the importance of pulses and the, uh, the way in which the pulses provide nutrition and to reduce the malnutrition among the uh, uh, children and what kind of food security we can think about through these pulses was one of the agenda in 2016. Again, in 2020, last year, we celebrated a kind of international year for plant health. So my dear student, just see the entire world is worried about the agriculture uh, setbacks and the entire world is thinking about how to have a kind of... Uh, a redefinement or a kind of transformation in the system. That is one of the reasons why such kind of uh, things have been brought forward and all these things, the family farming, the soil, pulses, and the plant health are very critical for that. These are the very basic thing. I just wanted to just trigger you soil. Don't forget about that. Water is a scarce commodity which will be coming a bit later. Then the climate, the weather conditions, which are very, very important. I think now everybody talks about the climate change. That is a central fulcrum which brings back uh, down all the natural system to a great level. The seed which a farmer is going very well, uh, friends, you have to see the best of the seed a farmer utilizes so that his uh, income is always doubled or his production system is amplified. And just see, you have to love and take care of a farming farmers. That is why we are all brought up in the scenario of the agricultural educational system where what is the need of the farmer? So farmers' needs have been addressed, whether it is a deterioration in the soil or a kind of a reduction in the availability of water or even change, climate change catastrophes, or a small mechanization process or a kind of tool which is ready. So we have a two schemes here, a kind of programs 
may namely the farmer first program wherein the farmer innovation resources science and technology is taken up at hand and also we have a students ready program wherein the rural entrepreneurship awareness development yojana is being uh, made exclusively for empowering the students in terms of skill development as well as in terms of the other factors for that matter now what is the moola mantra of our farming farmer so this is very important my dear students so you should see a farmer selects the best of the material whether it is coconut scenario we have just projected that any planning material for that matter it should be best of it so if the pedigree is taken care of well i think the farmer is going to be prosperous now comes the protection especially what kind of management aspect he has to take and what kind of problems he is going to encounter in due course of time whether it is water availability or whether it is the soil health issues or even the planted disease management uh, disease issues he is going to identify that and solve it so that is very important to see he is protecting the crop for his own welfare now the third important thing is production once he takes care of the best pedigree and raises the uh, production naturally the production is going to amplify and once the production is going to amplify the fourth p comes the processing so that's the value addition where the farmer is always going to be made profitable so it is not the production system he rents you have to see that the production is uh, always there with less of uh, factor loss or less of involvement of resources and more of productivity is happening and finally he will end up in the kind of value addition system or a kind of a processing system that makes him profitable and his uh, income is going to be doubled so this is where the scenario is for which the latest technology are all going to be fine tuned so my dear students in to understand this particular uh, idea to understand this particular thing you have to know what exactly a science is the so science of farming as i already defined you it is a kind of harnessing it is how the nature especially the solar light is being harnessed but the word is derived from knowledge and the science is nothing but how you reason out for a logical approach to understand that is very very important so you organize the knowledge and how are you going to use it it's out of box thinking where it is always it has a kind of a passion which any student for that matter has to be inculcated whether you have interest in the basic sciences whether you have an interest in the farming science the applied science it is up to you but the passion in which you take the passion the understanding in which you take make difference so you have to have a science in all the things whether you communicate a technology to the farming community there again a participatory approach comes whether you develop a technology for to the farming community there again things and what are the scenario for that so science is always truth centric it is evidence based it is reproducible and it is extra consistent so a science which a scientist develops in own lab at the southern india is always going to take the entire nation or it is always going to take up the entire world for that matter so it is always go universal my dear with our constitution says to develop scientific temper humanism and the spirit of inquiry so don't forget so our constitution itself says that it is linked to a kind of spirit of inquiry and humanism so my dear students the students have to have a kind of humanism so science is always with a human face science is not definitely without a human face so if you talk science without a human face without the natural uh, face it is going to have a very catastrophic have an observation in your experiments have a systematic observation recorded have kind of an inductive reasoning and a septic analysis of data that is one of the reasons why you see no plants have uh, legs for them to move around why they don't want to move around they don't want to move around because they can prepare their own food own food material whereas in case of human beings we are in search of food that is why we have legs for them it's very fundamental and the uh, reasons behind all the other green revolution thanks to uh, dr normani morlock and in india we had uh, professor then who have led this for anyway that part i will put uh, away so my dear students why do you study when somebody asks why do you study agriculture as a, a profession why do you study this field of science don't forget to say that you are going to accomplish your goal so that is where you are so swami vivekananda very clearly told arise away can stop not till your goal is reached so have a goal setting the students should definitely have a kind of goal setting this is very important and that should have a kind of temperament of science so we always say in bible also that is a very important verse saying that if you keep your hand anyone who has to plow and then keeps looking bad this of no you so once you take a plow you have to look forward if you don't look forward the animal will pull you down so that is the point which is so you have to have a kind of a rationality a knowledgeable a person to have a kind of karya karana viveka that is one of the points we have to understand you should be very humble so anahamkara modesty and humbleness leads to greatness in you and finally the experimentation with pakka science true science in it with an innovation in your mind sundra anishna that is what we call 
and fourth one is relentlessness you have to accomplish some oppressively constant how neeraj chopra has obtained it it is how he has worked hard for to accomplish his goal exactly what we have to do here and integrity that is very important be always uh, truthful and that makes the difference so your uh, theme should be your objective should be with complete satyam with a kind of nityam permanency and with a kind of purnam holistic so that is how your goal setting should be we should be very specific and re- so on this thing fit together so my dear students you just see what happened to the agriculture scenario so the entire covid the entire world was worried the health sector has been complete all the trades everything came to a standstill but agriculture did not agriculture fed to all the people nobody in this world was dead due to the covid pandemic especially in terms of hunger so that is how agriculture has prospered in this scenario so what are uh, the response what what ex- happened to them so the nobel committee selected the nobel peace prize for the world food program because they could see the efforts at the hunger and they used that because when you are hungry it is going to be a problematic one so my dear students you just see the importance of putting that so at the world level it was recognized and the nobel peace prize was awarded to the world food program and again you just remember to this year's world food prize came to a one a very distinguished scientist uh, professor shakuntala for the, uh, the native of jesse she is a native of trinidad tobacco and a citizen of denmark has received this and her entire work what she was doing is at bangladesh so what did she do she has developed a kind of aquatic food system so that the small fishes in the bangladesh scenario could see that the farmers could raise properly and their livelihood has prospered and finally all the small fish species has increased the total productivity at least by five times the result in this she got the world food prize so everything is nearby understand take all this thing together so what was icr doing so icr as you all know that the apex body for agriculture research education and a teaching system in this is all the state agriculture universities are partially or one way or other linked with icr in all the things for that so the president of it is none other than the honorable union minister for agriculture sri narendra singh modi uh, tomar ji and you also have a respected director general uh, dr lochan mahapatra ji what i am just trying to say is what was this icr uh, icr was started as imperial council for agriculture research way back in 1929 in 29 it was royal commission of agriculture which has recommended formation of this imperial council only to have a kind of agriculture research a science into agriculture so that everything is done in a very systematic manner and so that the farmers welfare is taken care of so the royal commission has recommended the setup and then came icr as a registered body so it guides it manages and so the responsibility on through the agriculture research came our green revolution so we have to be really proud of that and came horticulture revolution now the horticulture productivity is on the higher side and you can just see the fisheries as well as the animal husbandry so agriculture i mean icr has already already under its belt around 102 icr institutes we have in form of big institutes and small institutes doing research crop based research or even the genetic conservation research its animal fish or even plant resources it has under its command around 71 universities and 721 krishi vigyan kendras so it has got nine major divisions which has uh, taking place you just have a crop science is a very broad area where the food border and pulses are being taken care the horticulture science food vegetables are taken care the natural resources the soil water shared everything agriculture engineering the farm machinery and power that makes a lot of difference the agriculture engineering because any kind of mechanization is going to make a very very difference. Access again, animal science, fishery science, agricultural extension, and education and the knowledge management. I think how are the knowledge being dis- uh, distributed to the farming community? So these are all the areas where you can think about to choose your specialization and see that it is being getting transformed in the years to come. So we are the second largest agrarian economy. Just see in the world, India is well spotted because of its the largest agrarian economy, and also that the poverty hunger percent reduced to. one third thanks to the efforts taken by our farming community so one third of our uh, poverty and hunger has uh, in fact come down so that is the point of it so we have to have a kind of a system where even from a chronic uh, a kind of ship to mouth existence now we have caught a kind of a ship to silo kind of uh, thing so we are in that process of uh, silo to ship economy right uh, this moment and thanks to the efforts by uh, dr swami nathan and its team to see how the green revolution took place even the wheat production has been simply amplified not only with that high uh, yielding varieties 
very good uh, utilization of fertilizers, judicious management of all these things. Again, along with that came the uh, development of the dairy sector. You just see 1,45,000 village directives have been benefiting around 50 million farmers. Thanks to the efforts by Professor Burgis Purian, who is responsible for a kind of white revolution. And see how the uh, revolutions are happening in all the sectors of agriculture and even coming to our fishery sector. It contributes around 12.8 of the total land protein. Fish, fish is the best food of its nature, whether it takes in the protein, amino acid, everything. So the entire production, what I'm just trying to highlight is the research outcome and the hard work of the farming community is very, very important. Just see the food grain production, where were we in 1951? Around 51 million tonnes. Where were we now? 310 million uh, tonnes, which means around six-fold enhancement we could accomplish. It's a great, great achievement uh, as part of the contributions for the easier system. If you see the horticulture around 10 times, again, you see the milk around it's fished 18 times. So all the sectors are prospering. Even you just see the agriculture export, 143 crores, it has reached to 253 crores. These are all the points which we have to see. In many of the horticulture tops, either in banana or even grapes, a papaya, we are the leading producers of the world. Even a lot of varieties have been uh, coming out, which needs uh, for the latest technology, like you just see Pusa, a kind of variety which is the cross between amarapalli and sensation and it is highly suitable for the high density order so these are the latest tools and technologies which are emanating now what happens to agriculture in the present scenario which everybody has to understand now you just see agriculture is no more a kind of rural livelihood sector it has now become a kind of a modern business enterprise so the food security the food processing industry the food packaging industry are all a kind of a multi uh, dollar business venture. So it is in that area, you sh people should be focused. Just see the share of agriculture GDP in our country. This year, it is around 19.9 percent and the growth rate of 3.4. I think all the other sectors have tremendously crumbled because of COVID, but we prospered. So that has to be upkept. And just see, we were in a position to continuously supply the rice, wheat, pulses, to all the people who are in need of that. So the total grain production, you just see all time high, more than 11 million tonnes. And through this uh, uh, National Food Security Act, we contribute around 56% of the material to all the needed. In spite of all these things, in spite of all the rosy pictures of agriculture, in spite of all the wonderful contributions by the farming community in the agricultural sector, the outcome, the resultant is that the hunger index could not be brought down. So in India, the problem now persists is the kind of the global hunger scenario. We are in 94th position. This has, this has to go upwards. Just see China, for that matter, within the rank of uh, the five. We are around 27.5. Even most of our other nations are in a uh, smaller nation than us are in a better position. So we have to have around 690 million people are undernourished. So that's the point of thing. And our sustainable development goal with the FAO the second uh, SDG goal is zero hunger, which we are supposed to do by 2030. We are aiming at that. So it is one system we have to aim at all. And finally, we have to focus not only on nature, we are focused not only on the health of the plants, not only on the health of animals, the health of everybody. So that is the one health approach. Once the one health is uh, uh, taken care of, now the entire agriculture, the entire production system will merge with the environmental integrity as rightly pointed out by Kalavadi, madam. So the environmental integrity or the ecological stability is very, very important for which how are we going to integrate agriculture production system to make it highly diversified and to see the nutrition in the country slowly uh, reduced or extinguished in the near future. Now, this is something which I thought I should share with you regarding the agricultural scenario. And coming to our institute, that is our institute, the ICR, CPC, the Central Plantation Crop Research Institute. As you all know, that coconut is a kind of a kalpa briksha, that every part of the plant is used for the mankind. So it conserves, it gives a kind of ecological service. It attracts a lot of honeybees for its pollination and also to the entire system. You see the entire ocean or entire island system is only prevalent because of the coconut. So coconut is a kind of a crop and all the produces which it produces, it is not only a health drink, it is not only a kind, it produces a food fiber, it also produces <coughs> everything for the matter which are needed for the mankind. So a kind of agricultural uh, linkage of this coconut in the agricultural system starts in 1908. 
you have, should not forget the role of an initial mycologist professor uh, i think sir ej e. butler who visited the state of travancore to look and study about a uh, disease a very uh, uh, what a, what we can call a kind of a, a debilitating malady on coconut system even now it persists the root wheel disease so he did not name it as a root wheel disease so he was he just named it as a kind of a, a fungal disease at that time in 1908 so that was a report on the coconut system now the systematic agriculture research started in 1916 thanks to the efforts by uh, dr h c samson he was the deputy director of agriculture and that uh, period at telichery and their team the colonial uh, rule was responsible for the establishment of around four centers at dakshin canada dakshin canara is now a part of karnataka and that was under madras presidency you just see madras presidency dakshin canara four research institutes have started 16 after his uh, going of uh, dr samson came uh, mr govind the kid away farm manager at kasagod station to took over the charge and he was also doing a kind of thing and kind of the same kind of activities he was mentioning in 1934 came uh, dr j s patel j s patel joined the institute somewhere in 1931 and he was the person he's an oil seed breeder and the his knowledge in the breeding was the first hybrid for your information so for the and was the period at which the first coconut hybrid and age is wcd west coast tall into cgd chavakad green dwarf has been crossed that is t tall into dwarf has been bred and it is planted in nileshwar which is a part of the northern kerala and in 1937 it's very important in 1937 understanding the seriousness of this particular uh, disease the root wheel disease the princely state of initiate established a kind of a state research laboratory koilon which is in the southern part of kerala so that is how this disease took a prominence i think in the entire world or the entire uh, nation there is no such kind of a disease getting prominence even at uh, the level of the rulers the rulers thought like that and at that time you can just see what exactly has happened for that matter and finally what happened is that Uh, they have established a, a field station in Koyalon, and a field station was established at Kaingolam. That is where we are now presently hosting this particular webinar series. And in 1945, the establishment of a central coconut committee. What happened was during the Second World War, there was a lot of demand on this coconut sector. So the entire na uh, nation felt that there is a need for a kind of a uh, kind of central coconut committee that was established. And once that was established, slowly the coconut research center at uh, Kasaragod. was uh, becoming kind of the central coconut research station and sri cm cm john has become the first director of the institute and again at the same time in 1947 the re field research laboratory at uh, the research laboratory at koilon and the field station merged together and a new center that is the central coconut research station at kaingulam took uh, shape and it was dr kpv menon who was the first director of this particular uh, institute so this was started as a Uh, research institution uh, uh, and the director of this institute because this was mostly funded by the state department of agriculture at the time and under the princely state even if you just see this particular station was uh, marthanda varma ba so he was the elaya raja of uh, the state of uh, travancore at the time so they have constructed so it was uh, foundation town was somewhere in 24th april 1947 before independence and immediately after 8 months the station was complete and the station uh, structure was over. so that is how it is so the important disease is the root wheel disease still we have issues on uh, the diagnosis part but again thanks to dr solomon sir and the team they have done a wonderful job and it was this institute which has brought the first em into the entire country so you our entire institute will remember in what uh, way we have uh, done the research at that time in 1980s we have brought the uh, electron microscopy and dr uh, uh, solomon sir was trained in uh, germany in hands and they could establish the role of uh, uh, the phytoplasma uh, is involved in this particular uh, disease it could cause a kind of completed deterioration it's not killing the palm you just see it is a kind of a, a debilitating disease where you will find flaccidity that is uh, just a kind of a, a folding of our uh, uh, leaflets or Mid ribs in such a fashion of our 
uh, a backbone system and you will find a kind of a chlorosis and a kind of necrosis in the leaf system and of late our team uh, could also uh, find an association of a leaven group phytoplasma with this so we are still in the process and you can see some of these uh, uh, phytoplasma under electron microscopy done way back in 1980 so this is the first uh, station in this entire country to have electron microscopy at the time honorable minister inaugurated that so two vectors were that. So we have just grown and recently we have reported a kind of lethal build disease in coconut system, which is killing the palm. And it was reported on very isolated pockets in Tamil Nadu system. And we could identify this associated with a kind of a first group of uh, phytoplasma that is an asterisk group, sudden uh, fall of nut here, and there'll be a, a necrosis. And finally, the palm builds to that matter. In addition to that, the first point which I was mentioning, the root build disease, our uh, breeding group has, uh, but very systematically to evolve two, high, uh, two varieties, especially the Kalpa Sri, which is a kind of uh, CGD, and again Kalpa Rexta, which is a MGD, Malayan Green Walk. So the first one is high CGD into WCT. Earlier, the first breed developed by Dr. J. S. Patel was uh, WCT into CGD. It's a reciprocal cross of that. Here, the mother is a dwarf and uh, the father is a WCT. And we are grown to that level that now all the uh, material, all the planting material, all the seedling which produce are tagged here. So which means it has a traceability. So we have grown to that level and our uh, material can be scanned and we can see what kind of material we have in seed. Thanks to our genetics groups again, we were the first to develop a kind of a structure from the coconut inflorescence explant. Planted none other, other than by our honorable uh, union ministry, uh, we Murlidharan, when he visited last year to our institute, and the way in which uh, it was uh, done, and the palms are growing very nicely. And uh, it is a very continuous hard work. The efforts taken by uh, Dr. Uh, Raju sir, Dr. Reggie, Dr. Sharif, and the team, they have done a wonderful systematic work. And this, this can of the general important achievement. Uh, at this point of time is how to have a kind of the good production system. Uh, thanks to our efforts taken by Dr. Harry and Dr. Nika, they would have a kind of a production system in such a way how to optimize the use of uh, nutrients, optimize the use of water. So he has evolved a kind of a fertigation system where the nutrition is given every 15 days and the absorption by the plant and the production potential, the nut retentions are extraordinarily high. The very good uh, thing to see in the system. And again, you have our two customized nutrient mixtures which have been developed from our system, either Kalpa Poshak for the uh, small palms or the juvenile palms and Kalpa Vardini for the adult palms. And we have a kind of intercropping system, especially the Heliconia and other crops in papaya for the system, how that can be integrated for a kind of a profitable horticulture. So these are some of the areas which we are focusing and the points we got. So coming to the field of entomology, we have a bio botanical formulation in the form of a pellets, in the form of paste, so that the main pest like the uh, rhinoceros beetle is being say, uh, protected from invasion. So these are some of the effective new formulations which are I made. Invasive pest is another buzzword in agricultural scenario. So we have documented at least some five species of uh, invasive white flies in coconut system and all the molecular characterization has been done. And you can just see all the five species, how it can be identified at uh, the egg level, at infant level at the pupil level and all these things are very important because invasive pest is a kind of a biodiversity decline which has to be happening and we all evolved a kind of a conservation uh, biological control policy where you can use uh, how to conserve the system so we have advised the farming community to see how the parasitoid especially the encarcia godulope is found to be very effective in the natural suppression of the rugo spiraling white fly which was emerged as invasive pest in 2016 in uh, uh, Tamil Nadu. And for the first time in this, uh, we could also identify a beetle which could scrape the sooty mold and take away. So normally when the uh, white fly feeds, it produces honeydew. The resultant of the honeydew is the sooty mold uh, deposition on the top of the leaves. So this will scrape off and simple application of water, conserving these natural enemies are found the potential. And you will find a kind of a crop habitat diversification system, a stimulo deterrency model, which we have developed in our system, is found to be not only climate, uh, climate, it is also found to be a uh, kind of a pollination and pollinators attract and reduces the pest to a greater level. So my dear students, just have a kind of variety. So this is the aerial view of this particular garden, which is found to be very uh, emphasis. So, for the management of wild place, what we advise is a kind of a conservation biological control, elastic trapping, 
and also nutrient need based nutrition and ecological intensification for the matter is very very important so again we have a kind of the farmer first approach where we integrate the technologies we see that all uh, complete a panchayat is identified and farm holds are benefited the income is more than two fold or 1.5 fold to a greater level so we integrate the technologies and give to the uh, farming community as a point of capsule to do that so the second agriculture is another important area i think this is the point so for coconut we have at least uh, 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 two dozen products with us which are all see this is the coconut inflorescence the kalpa rasa which is a inflorescent sap which is just like a health drink which you can take up and uh, coconut sugar is a low glycemic sugar the bunch oil it is a miracle for its matter even it was having reports of, uh, uh, having some kind of positive impact on the covid patient the desiccated coconut the tenderball coconut these are all the products in the brain child which cpcr has evolved in the long run so how are you going to create an effective production system that is the point i think we have to focus all the students now we have to have these are the holistic idea you have got so you should have more focus on the precision agriculture for input and water use optimization so is very important so for which the remote sensing is very important part so these are the areas i think you may have to focus how have a kind of a decision support system to see that the precision agriculture is more we have generated some data of using fertigation and also the water conservation now comes the gene editing for the multi trait seed improvement so this is a very important another important aspect where the uh, editing of the uh, gene is very important so that the marker rated selection is made best so we have how the crispr and the cas gene produce a different kind of thing so all adds up the farmer's income it reduces the micronutrient deficiency at the same time it reduces the uh, greenhouse emission so these are the points so the third important is the first one is a kind of precision system second is a kind of gene editing system third is a kind of the microbiome technology for to enhance the crop resilience so crops should bear the uh, burden of that <coughs> crop should have a kind of a system where it can adjust to the pressure to that so these are very important strategies so for which a micro microbiome is going to play a very very important role biological based plant protection so all these things are to reduce the emissions so these are the points the micronutrients are very important you kind of have a sustainable bio solutions we have to evolve in pest and disease management and finally the off grid renewable energy that is a solar based energy system so whether it is in the form of a, a energy conservation or either in the uh, case of a biological based all these newer technologies should be focused with the younger generation to see that you are transforming the agriculture to that front how the history start and a kind of a gatherers we went to a stone age where animals and machines were used now we are in the digital farming system so the digital farming system has to be very much addressed now the present generation is so capable of using the digital system so whether mobile can regulate the entire water mechanism of the country entire water regulation of a farm system everything should be done now comes how are you going to use the Uh, uh, genetics of this india is a house of genetic resources we have a wide of diversity are we using the diversity successfully of course we are not so that is one of the reasons we are blow uh, uh, problem of uh, uh, famine irish famine because of one particular disease eradicating the complete potato system in ireland so we should not have one kind of crop or one kind of variety which can be used for the mankind we should have a kind of a galaxy of that we should have a wide array of that so now you just see the agriculture diversity we have to lose that so agriculture is presently dominated only by a 12 species whether we are satisfied with it absolutely no so this 12 species has to be at least 120 species so this is diverse and see that all the diversity is used in your uh, production system so don't see that that is one of the uh, richest uh, Uh, resource conservation is the icr system where we have all the crop institutes will have a very good germplasm to start with this is the germplasm which we are talking about <coughs> so in coconut alone we have more than 400 germplasm conserved in a very important uh, regional center at kidu which is a part of cpcri so you just see coconut is such a crop you need a large area for the conservation so the entire reserved forest of that area is being taken we have the grain system you just see the diversity of the coconut coconut is as small as you are a small uh, Uh, goli and it is as big as you are a uh, kind of uh, the uh, original coconut which you came such a diversity it has got so all the diversity whether we are in a position to exploit it, yes it has a role in the uh, pedigree system of uh, selection and we have to see that it is used for our breeding program and the better varieties of offsprings are being produced now the biofortification now the entire world is worried about the malnutrition so how are we going to address in india so 
thanks to the efforts by the icr team as well as the honorable prime minister has released a kind around 17 varieties which includes rice wheat and even your maize and uh, finger millet and little millet and even a uh, yam which is fortified with some of the uh, minerals we have either in the form of iron zinc and calcium and this has been uh, donated to the nation and all the angan bodies will be taking up it uh, and the thing the result and in the all the younger children which have to be now very much strengthened and not standard so they will be benefiting by this particular system to a greater level now this is a topic i think our honorable chief guest even our uh, head also mentioned about the climate change scenario so the climate change is definitely a reality whether it's a drought or it's a, a kind of a fire or it's a kind of flood it's all part of that so all the disasters more than 80 percent is because of that Temperature is risen by around 0.2 everywhere. In one place, now it is the forest fires are there. In even Germany, France witnessed a kind of flood. <coughs> even we in India, northern part, especially Himachal Pradesh and uh, Madhya Pradesh and Uttarakhand, we uh, experienced flood. Kerala, this time, I think uh, we have been saved. Uh, we could not have that kind of uh, so far. So, because it is now a change. Normally in Kerala, we have a rainfall pattern south of Monsoon starting somewhere in the end of May and then uh, uh, proceeding to the max, uh, highest level by June, July. But for the past two years, it is in the August we get the flood. So, all these are a changes of that. So, higher carbon dioxide accumulation will re reduce the protein, zinc, and iron content of most of the professional maize and wheat. So, what is that due to? Because it is of the Mother Julian oscillation where the rain clouds get accumulated in the point of time. And that is how we have to. Uh, does it. So the climate smart agriculture is one of the points for that. And we have the scenario. Just see the per capita availability of water. In 1951, it was around 5,000. Now in 2021, we are just above 1,500. So 1,000 means it is scarcity and water stress at 1,000. We have come in between these two. So we are under acute. That is why the gel uh, commission has come or the gel ministry, the water ministry has taken shape. So my dear uh, students, see that you are conserving water. You, you are using limited water and your uh, uh, agriculture water or the water used for your daily use are all under uh, limited use or under need-based use. Just see how the water is being used. Punjab, the highest. Rajasthan, the highest. Haryana, the highest. Tamil Nadu, the highest. The result in this, the groundwater is depleted. So these are going to cause a kind of havoc in the next years to come. So see that such kind of freedom is not given and all, and all the use of being need-based and all the resources should be conserved for that matter. Just see the per capita availability of the water storage in our uh, nation. In Russia, it is around 6,103 meter cube, whereas in India, it is hardly 219. In China, it is 1,100. So these kind of systems are very, very uh, dangerous for us. So we have to plan. So what are these students going to take about the water conservation measures? And how are you going to conserve the water for the next generation team of farmers? So these are the areas where you can think about and just see the nutrients. In 1951, it was only nitrogen which was deficit. Now, in 2017, nitrogen, iron, phosphorus, zinc, potassium, molybdenum, everything is coming at a deficit, which means we have exploited the system. So, how best we are going to replenish the system to a systematic effect? So, all the things. So, as pointed out by the chief, that the total factor productivity is very important. China is very high. Just see in India, the total factor product is just one, which is highly insufficient. How are you using the productivity concept, which includes the resources and utilization of the labor? And in Tamil Nadu, it is found to be highest, followed by uh, Gujarat. Kerala is not at all in the scenario. And what I'm trying to hide this factor productivity is very, very crucial for us. And factor productivity leading, how much factor productivity is affected by the climate change? Just see. In India, we are going to get around minus 25. That is so alarming. You just see in Canada, it is minus 1. And the least developed countries are minus 18. So, though we are not the greatest contributor of greenhouse emission, but the sufferers are Indians. So, we have to take a stand on that. How are we going to evolve a kind of a climate smart farming system? Is so, very, very crucial for that. So, next comes the invasive species, the exotic uh, pests. The exotic pests roam around here. So, the bringing of the material from other nations, because this is a kind of bioterrorism. So you have to see that the planting material which brings from one area to other area, or you get a kind of movement has to be under strict quarantine so that the quarantine is a word now has been uh, known to everybody because of uh, the COVID-19. And quarantine is a word which is used in the invasive pest long, long back. And it is still in work because whenever a material consignment comes, 40 days is a literal meaning of quarantine. And the 40 days, it will be there offshore and the uh, uh, experts go and examine and if it is free, it will be done. So that can be deliberate in queue. The main point of invasive pests are they cause an upsurge and they cause a problem to the industry. So what we can do to have a kind of a holistic system? 
so this is one of the models which we have developed in our institute at uh, kayangulam where a coconut is the main crop it's a small area of land around uh, half an acre we have all the system together we have birds in the system we have honeybees in the system we have fish in the system we have uh, the resource management in the system we have all the horticulture crops in the limited area so that all the uh, plants produce a different kind of volatile cue so the main pests are not attracted to the uh, system of the main crop so this is an area which has to be used for us and this is a kind of a climate smart farming where even any change even the water heavy water is there it is not going to be affected everything the system is going to protect and our system produced around 198 nuts and in a uh, period of 10 years and in a uh, phase of what uh, palms are so we could get around 1.7 lakh per annum so this is an area which you have to focus so the, everything is taken care of which i will uh, just bring it and next come this is the kind of a uh, system and the health is very very important what is health it is an integration of all your pest management your weed management your disease management nutrient management soil health management, everything together so that the genetic potential of the plant is being overshot so this is the health aspect of a crop and this is where the younger generation should focus to see how the health is being nurtured and health is very important in all the crops for that matter and for which how is the nutrition going to play a major role how are the pests and diseases everything so this what are you going to do so the concept as i mentioned earlier is a one health approach which is very very crucial and critical my dear students it is always for the better soil you will have better plants and if the plants are better the better animals will be produced the animals are better than human beings are produced and if everything is there the better environment is produced and that is the point which has to be only then going to be environment is going to be healthier human beings are going to be healthier if the animals are going to be healthier human beings are going to be healthier if you go and destroy the forest ecosystem where animals are residing the animals will spread some of the diseases to you so my dear students you have to see that all are healthy in the system not only human beings so human beings cannot be healthy in isolation so if the environment is healthier if the plants are healthier if the soil is healthier then the human beings are going to be healthier and this one health concept or a one world approach is very important and this is the focus of agriculture at this present scenario so we have to focus in that so what are the digital way of way things we are doing so we have got a, a e kalpa an android mobile uh, app based app we have all the systems so what we have been talking is there in our system so anybody going to the play store can download this e kalpa what are the advancements in coconut technology development is being there and we in our system have this kind of drone system where we take up uh, the drone mechanism we use the pest surveillance and all and off late you just see a drone which is used for surveillance and also for use the health of the crop and see what kind of health deficit is there you can uh, give the plant material either in the form of a small spray and that so in coconut we have a very important problem called as a red palm we will in red palm we will it's a, a hidden injury which a farmer will be diagnosing at the very fag end of its uh, uh, death of the palm so early diagnosis we have made a kind of a detector with a, a startup uh, namely a resnova and development a position to uh, diagnose the infestation at a very advanced level so that when a farmer uh, see this is the farm which is infested and this is the detector which we have uh, developed and the process is that we will have this kind of uh, detector which has got a sensor which is uh, just fixed on the palm so that will record the uh, sound which is present in the system so this is recording once it is recording in two minutes it will just scan the palm whether it has got the grub or not if the grubs are not there it will say uh, absent and if the grubs are detected so once it's detected we can go for the next strategy of managing the palm so here the palm is from the detection process so these are the areas where we've got now to have all these things together my dear students the research fund is always an issue so in india if you just see the expenditure intensity or science funding is very very low so in 83 it was 0.25 now it has increased marginally to 0.39 so if you just see in 20 uh, 2005 the entire scenario of publications of Line, and you can China in the red line, and if you can see the Brazil in the dotted line, so all together. But after 2005, everything, everybody progressed, and we have just come down. The reason is the funding has come down. So you have to see that the funding. I think Professor C N R Rao, the Bharat Ratna recipient, and a very luminous scientist of the entire nation, is always fighting for that. And we just see in Australia and USA, it is three percentage. Brazil two percentage. We are just 0.39 percentage. So this has to go up. Once it goes up, definitely the thing is there. So we have a United Nations Special Summit in 2021, my dear students, you have to uh, try to see online on all these things. So the main agenda there is ensuring access to food, which is safe and nutritious. That's very, very important. So safe and nutritious food is the main thing. The shift 
to healthy and sustainable consumption pattern. The consumption pattern should be healthy now. Safe food should be there. Consumption pattern should be healthy. Boost native, nature positive uh, production. So nature positive is environmental responsible farming system. Advanced, everybody should have a, a, a livelihood and a life successful and building resilience against wealth. And so uh, to build resilience in the form of these are the area where uh, student community has to focus. So where is this? So from adversity you are made to a kind of opportunity from a kind of uh, environmental change, you have to see how you can reduce the biodiversity. Monoculture should be uh, changed in the uh, uh, condition of crop habitat diversification. Go for an environmental responsible farming where the environment is taken the prime concern and harmony. Integrity is very important to make a one health system. The and underground economies. So the bioliteracy campaign is very important. Once you have a kind of plurilateral linkages, the sustainable development goal is achievable. And by 2030, we can see that the elimination uh, hunger is eliminated from the system by increased productivity. The hunger reduce is brought down and the emission is also. My dear students, what are you going to do? So you should have a kind of resolution. The seven hours are very important. Have a good resolution. Have a good see that you will become a great scientist. It's an area of specialization. Fix it. Record the information properly. Revise it periodically. You have to resist. Don't see unwanted things at the time of your uh, preparation or whatever it is. Take adequate rest. And finally, you can reproduce better for the examination and always have a kind of a revelation in you. So learning is a continuous process. And it is always uh, the process that gives you a solution to any problem which you have. So learning is a continuous thing. You have to learn to do. And you have to learn to live in harmony. The harmony is very important. The best way of learning is teaching. My dear students, whenever you have something, try to link with your fellow uh, things, that will be thing. So finally, the take home message is have a fixed goal and be focused to accomplish it. Be positive, work hard and have self-belief that will definitely go. Work for an environmentally responsible world and whole health mission for a self reliant India. So always focus of a one health approach into things. So what are you doing? Our, our father of nation, Babuji, is told like this. You should have knowledge with a character. So you are knowledgeable now, whether you have just refined this. You should have commerce with a kind of morality. You should have morality. It's not my words. Words of uh, our father of nation. He's a man you have to learn and enjoy. I think our uh, head is a, a very uh, popular uh, fan of uh, him. And they have visited even uh, the Porbandar area and uh, other things. The science with the humanity. Very important. So you just see knowledge with a kind of character. Commerce with a kind of morality. Science with humanity. And politics with principle. You should have politics only with principle. Otherwise, it is all. So with this, you have to see how you learn. You have to have a balanced life. See a drop of water, how beautifully the insect is shared to have a paka balance. And my dear students, you forget the past, see the good, and stay grateful. And uh, thanks a lot for this wonderful opportunity uh, the organizers have given to me. And I think uh, I have done some justice uh, to the topic which is assigned to me. Thanks. Thank you, Anandala. And wish you all the students a very brightful academic pursuit to follow with. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for your inspiring, motivational, and very informative lecture, highlighting the practical ways to achieve the sustainability in agriculture system, as well as the historic significance and contributions of ICR, uh, as well as CPCR in general, and ICR, CPCR, or Region Station Kangaroo, with your excellent communication and the presentation skill. Thank you, sir. We are thankful to Dr. S. Kalavadi, Madam, uh, Station Head, for all your help and support. I thank Dr. K. Nihad for planning of this program. We have participants from uh, 41 colleges from 12 states. So I extend our sincere thanks to all the student participants who attend this webinar series through Zoom meeting as well as YouTube Live. Thank you.